today is a completely uh, different angle to the whole story. So we will go creative today and we will have lots of uh, different things to uh, look forward to. Uh, we will start with design and color. Now as the subject says it is about uh, the basic graphic design area. Again every time now onwards whatever I am talking you have a task to map it to the relevance of our subject. Now uh, what does what do I mean by that? So we we are typically all our all of us are filmmakers all of us are video production people and uh, luckily or by design all these principles of colors all the principles of graphic design stand as the same weight what they stand for the still frames as compared to the video. So it is not like if you say that contrast and these things are very good in photography and not related in video it is not true. So it is the same principle which is applicable here in video. In fact sometimes it is more applicable because it is a moving image finally. So you have to see to it that all the images have the similar thing instead of just one image. So that makes it very important and uh, I am not sure about people present here who have or who do not have the background of art as such but uh, let me try and cover up very very basic things. Sometimes you may find it very 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 basic but uh, we have probably not carefully thought over it. I am uh, aware of some people in the audience who have done their fine arts and who have uh, properly studied uh, design and graphics and uh, layout and color schemes and all that in the 5 years course what they have gone through. But I also know some people who have done completely tangential things. So some people who have done microbiology and some people who have done commerce and some people who have done uh, political science maybe. So with that I think we will uh, we'll start with the agenda for today. We will have uh, some basic principles about graphic design. We will also see some examples. We will uh, touch base on some color theory. Uh, we will see some color schemes, some examples again and we will have assignments as usual. Okay. So uh, these are typical graphic design principles so to say. Yeah, I do not want to say that these are the only 5 principles and there is like nothing else beyond this but these are typically the most interesting and the most uh, commonly found graphic design principles. And we will go in detail with each and every uh, aspect of uh, this principle because it will teach you something uh, very different every time you go and visit. But how many people in the, so you guys can start uh, participating now. So you, all of you have heard of these phrases right, you have heard about balance, so you, you talk about it like uh, emphasis, rhythm, unity, contrast. Contrast is the most easiest of all I suppose because video may contrast hota hi hai. So hum log usko jyada par use karte. But because we are probably constantly recording lot of indoor stuff, uh, outdoor hum log kam karte hai. So indoor mein jyada tar jab hum kam karte hai, to ye baaki cheezo ke liye thoda scope kam hota hai. But still we will have uh, the theories definitely telling us a lot, lot of things. So how many people actually uh, apart from the BFA people, how many people actually know couple of these theories what I am talking about. Okay. So going with uh, the balance first, so balance is a actually a, a principle which is used typically to uh, explain or present a particular idea in a given field. Now if, so I am now onwards I will be using this green box as my example area and uh, the left hand side white box as my explanation area. So this is a standard design principle I am following for my presentation now. Okay. So typically balance can be achieved in two ways, one is a symmetrical and one is an asymmetrical uh, way of uh, designing. So the one of the examples which I had shown there was about a, was it symmetrical or asymmetrical what you saw now, was it symmetrical or asymmetrical? Huh? symmetrical right because if you draw a line in the center you will have exactly the similar things on both the sides. This is the most typical design format which is very very commonly used because it will go with any requirement. You have to write anything, you have to write 
a wedding invitation card or you have to write a, a, a just a, a paragraph about something, we, you can just write it in center layout. Typically, it will look okay. Now, the fun starts when you have to actually uh, make it so nice that people should definitely read it and it should also have the uh, relevance to the subject. For example, if I am writing notes of this particular talk, talk, what I am giving right now, I cannot write in center layout, right? Because it is not something which is a poem or it is not a, uh, it is not an invitation card design or something. So, every, every aspect will require certain design principle. Now, for example, in our parlance, now let us go back to our subject. So, in video, so how do you do the symmetrical and unsymmetrical uh, design, right? So, symmetrical would be, so we are probably recording this video right now, what is happening. So, we have suppose the person's face here. So, this would be definitely what? Symmetrical, right? Now, if I do this, so this will be asymmetrical, not only asymmetrical, it will be completely imbalanced. People will not know what is happening here in this area whether something is coming up here and um, why is this kept blank and uh, these all these things will start suddenly rolling in when you have the, the particular uh, layout of this thing. This is also very important in terms of uh, the titling. Uh, all these graphic design color things principles will uh, mainly map to the titling and the uh, graphics part what you, you do in the video but we, I am also going some more into the live video. Okay, so, for example, the text is to be written about um, the title of the course, skill development in whatever. So, we have this slide also, right? but let me uh, show you this. So, if I write uh, skill development course in post production blah, blah, blah and Samir Sasrabuddhe, this works, right? this is a symmetrical design, it works very well, no problem. The moment I do suppose skill development course, I like Samir Sastravudde like this, and I like IIT Bombay like this. This is completely asymmetrical without any balance and nobody knows where things are standing. Uh, you have to watch these things carefully because we will have assignments based on this. So, uh, that is why you need to be very clear about what we are doing. Another very good example of, uh, a very good principle of uh, showing a particular uh, design is using a principle called emphasis. So, now without telling what is the most important square in this design, you can spot, right. So, this one, uh, this one is the most important square here, right, because it is bigger than all these things and that is why it is very easily found out. Uh, similar things happen in layout also. For example, we are tight, we are doing a title of uh, a course. Now, the course title is suppose fluid dynamics and the speaker is Samir Sasrabuddhi suppose. It is given in IIT Bombay. Now, uh, based on the fact of emphasis, what, what should be the most emphasis, emphasized matter? Anybody? What should be the, uh, the line which, which should have the most of the emphasis? Maximum emphasis to? Three things I said, right? Course name, speaker's name, organization name. Out of the three, which one should have? Course name. Okay. So, now the suddenly if I say and then say fluid dynamics and, uh, and I write IIT Bombay. So, uh, this holds well if, if I want to say for example, uh, Barack Obama's speech. Now, uh, the subject what Barack Obama is going to talk is slightly not of the same emphasis, emphasis what we want to. So, what we can do is we that time we have Barack Obama written such big thing and he talks about some global warming or whatever, then that becomes a smaller thing. So, it depends on the uh, requirement every time and then that call is to be taken by the designers. So, that is why emphasis is important. Okay. <coughs> We will have uh, something called rhythm. Now, there are same elements I am using again, but they are put up in a rhythm now, so that we can follow a certain thing. Now, if I want to, uh, if I want to bridge these two things, the, the in between objects provide me the complete rhythm of the whole thing. Now, the use of that rhythm is 
to be done very very carefully because it cannot be done for everything and anything. For example, again I will come back to uh, the slide of any educational thing. In uh, typically in this uh, presentation software you will have the facility of rotating text and other things, but you cannot use it for every now and then. For example, again if I want to uh, give a subject of uh, maybe uh, robotics and artificial intelligence. So, I, I possibly cannot write uh, cannot write it like this right. So, robotics and artificial intelligence cannot be written like this, be even if they give these options the, the, the software will have all the options of doing it like this, but the moment you do it like that it is not sounding as it is a robotics course right. So, so where where can this this thing go in which which subject can you use that for example, any subject cultural programs ok fine. So, uh, basically it is related to wherever there is some music sound dance or some art form which is which is fluid which is not very strict. The moment you have to say some strict things you want straighter approach. So, these are these are uh, very basic, but very effective things unity or uh, what I actually call it discipline. So, where you have a certain for example, uh, this these things. So, emphasis this cannot be used for one very classic case of creating a table. Suppose, I want to create a table of some 50 uh, entries data entries and some uh, complete report of 50 things. Suddenly, if I start giving emphasis to one figure here and one box is bigger than the other, uh, we will not be able to get the data. So, some things like tables and all will require this design. So, this is a very common and unique design uh, possibility where you cannot escape this. And the last one is about contrast. So, contrast is again into the shapes and here I am adding the element of color also. So, the moment you have a different color, different shape, different size, uh, the contrast is bigger. So, every time you want to emphasize another thing by uh, separating it out, you can play the contrast thing. You can do it black on white, white on black. So, you must have seen that the most important thing sometimes is also given importance using a black background right. You write the text in white. So, these are the typically the standard uh, principles which are used and uh, like I said I have introduced color at this point. So, it is mainly because of the fact that uh, we will be going into color uh, from this point onwards. So, there are fun some very few and uh, very interesting keywords which I have been listening to and you all must have been listening using uh, these words and uh, I do not know how many of you exactly know the definitions of these. So, definitions by by saying that I only mean that these definitions are the technical definitions. Shayad aisa ho sakta hai ki hame malum hai iska kya reason hai, but hum define nahi kar payenge. But how many people have heard these words? So, anybody has heard this word called you right. So, what is the you? So, non technical people uh, are uh, only can answer. So, <laughs> others uh, cannot ok. So, anybody has heard this word you or uh, saturation ok. Uh, any any word you know the meaning for out of all these words? Koi bhi ek word ka meaning malum hai to? Any word out of these? Contrast malum hai, brightness malum hai, ठीक है, okay. और chroma malum hai. Alpha मतलब ये हमारे mathematics का alpha, beta, gamma वाला नहीं है, ये alpha flash के parlance हैं, हाँ? Colors? Colors को कम करना. Brightness कम करना. तो brightness है ना वहाँ पे. So what is alpha? Opacity. Okay. Opacity means the transparency of to be increased. Okay. Fine. Uh, gradient, gradient both logon use kiya right, gradient, huh? ok from dark to light, a uh, light to dark hoga to, ho bhi gradient ok fine. So, from one point to other right, ok. So, we will go in actually details and also the very very specific definitions of these words, because these are very important. Uh, according to me that uh, we use these words, but it is very important to know them also properly. So, we use the proper words at proper points. So, 
तो हम लोग बहुत जगह पे गलत वर्ड यूज कर देते एंड दैट इज अ वेरी बैड टेक्निक टू हैव ओके सो यू वेन आई सर्च फॉर यू ऑन द वेब दीज आर सम ऑफ द डेफिनेशन आई गॉट सो वन ऑफ देम से प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ कलर्स बाई विच दे कैन बी परसिव्ड मतलब इसको देख के अगर हमें लगता है ये ब्लू है तो हम ये ब्लू यू है ऐसा बोलना है उसका ठीक है सो पर्टिकुलर ग्रेडेशन ऑफ कलर अ शेड और अ टेंट ना ऑल दिस वर्ड्स ऑल्सो कैरी मीनिंग मतलब हम जब शेड बोलते हैं तो कभी कभार शेड को हम लोग मतलब एक कलर के पर्टिकुलर जो पिकअप करते हैं उसको हम लोग कलर की शेड बोलते हैं कभी कभार अगर हम छत में गए तो उसको भी शेड बोलते हैं यहाँ शेड आ रही है शेडो आ रही है ठीक है तो डार्कर चीज़ों को भी शेड बोलते हैं कभी कभी so these are sometimes it has like more than one meanings but we'll take only the specific meanings the color of an object a color or a shade basically i like the last one it is another word for color it's a very simple definition but very practical definition so you even if it sounds very uh, foreign word and very uh, different word to remember it is a very simple word to remember for that is color so basically you is another word for color so in a color wheel you have to forget everything else and only look at the last rim so ye sab jo hai so now all these things are the different hues then what is saturation so saturation is actually the degree of hue in a given shade of color so agar koi bhi color hum choose karte hain to usme like suppose this is the color i have chosen yahan par so this has how much red in it and how much uh, basically it will have some black and uh, some red so the amount of red is called the saturation of red in that color are you getting the point so uh, basically we will also go to one uh, very interesting website so very interesting tutorial this person has created on colors yeah so so this is saturation actually so the moment we say 100% saturation of any color it is the top band and especially in this band we will have only 10% of saturation this color actually uh, especially this color if you select this has only 10% of blue right so this is this is we all say that this is a sky blue or a light blue or whatever but this is basically saturation if i want to define saturation with the help of this thing i'll say that this has 10% of blue and it it may have another colors also but the saturation of blue in this shade is 10% so this is a unit to measure the con color inside that shade so that is the point so is everybody clear or should we go ahead now and the last thing is about value why i have selected this hue saturation and value is because of the fact that uh, we all use softwares which will give us image manipulation options and hsv is a very very popular uh, filter what we use typically so for that reason i thought i'll use these three terms hue saturation and value and uh, the value is so the color entire color theory is based on this circle where the edge of the circle is the u as i said this particular thing is the saturation or the chroma people have actually uh, different uh, uh, notions about chroma and saturation also but anyway let's not get into that and the value is about the whiteness or the blackness of the color is called the value so like this is a very good example actually that's why i kept this image so uh, this is a place where uh, it is showing up how value is increased in this particular column so here if you see so this is 100% and this is 10% so the again the value increases as we go up right now this person has also done some very interesting uh, uh, designs he has presented the same designs using different uh, words what we are mentioning right now so if i change the values how will it look if i change the saturation how will it look if i change the u how will it look so these kind of things he has done in very nicely we can actually go and use this website for our educational purpose because i have 
already communicated to this person and he has agreed to uh, allow us to use this for our educational things. So I have already got an email from this person that you can use this his website for this thing. So uh, we can actually this will be part of my presentation slides which you can take down and then later on visit this. Again uh, we discuss something called gradient. So gradient is actually from a, a range of colors between any two given colors is gradient. So it can be light to dark but from yellow to violet also it is a gradient right. It need not be only black to white or only light to dark. It can be from any color to any color it is a gradient right. So here which are the two colors? This, these are the two colors right. Again uh, the notion of gradient people also uh, sometimes feel that it is only from, from one thing to other. Normally they only imagine gradient as this like this but there is something called a radial gradient also which can be circular and uh, from one color to another color you can go. So I am just revisiting these things sometimes you may feel that uh, the point is that we, we need to know the, uh, the exact wordings and we need to use them also properly that is the point. Okay, so like in here you will have what is this then? This gradient with multiple colors right and all this you cannot spot any single color at any point you will have multiple colors rolling in between. Then there is something called alpha. So alpha yes people rightly that this is a opacity channel or the transparency uh, level of a given object is called alpha. Now uh, here is a small example that this particular orange circle and this blue square intersect at this particular arc and uh, this particular piece like you see the dotted background from here. So this is completely transparent. What you see here is semi transparent. So what has happened here is that the alpha is slightly different. So alpha may be 30 or 40 where you can see the light blue and also the background here. So this is called alpha where uh, you can have it from 0 to 100 any particular setting is called alpha. Brightness and contrast everybody knows everybody has cameras and everybody has handled brightness and contrast but anyway I just thought uh, in the spirit of this course I will again revisit these things. So it is again overall lighting levels of the image and the definitely the brightness if you increase it will make it brighter. The, the very important uh, thing to be noted here is that uh, it possibly cannot be uh, done in a over uh, manner because it will also kill the details of that. So for example you can see the blue particular uh, tone here of the uh, water inside. Here you hardly can imagine whether it is water or is directly in the sunlight this particular fish whether it is in the sunlight or is inside the water you cannot make out that. So it also depends on how much levels you use. So that deliberately I use this picture to show you that the excess of brightness or excess of contrast will also lead to problems. This typically happens in what we use in videos because we start using a uh, higher quality brightness contrast for a better sharper things then it can also kill the essence. That is a very uh, very typical example is again of uh, our video recordings where we suggest the faculty do not wear white shirts because the moment you wear white shirts we have a problem here because uh, everything else will become brighter. Okay, so now that we have understood most of the words in color theory let us go to the different color schemes. So everybody has seen the color wheel right. So color wheel is uh, comprising of these uh, six colors basically I would uh, go back to the website to show you this. Again um, recently when we did some animation on color theory we realized that there are different basic colors in different domains like for example in our video domain we call it RGB there is no yellow because the yellow is given from the, the cathode ray tube right. So we do not have a separate color called yellow in our video parlance we call it RGB yellow is created right? what we had the session by uh, Sajjan last time. But in printing industry or in the art industry where you have paints and you can have colors these are the 
three basic colors actually. So they are called red, yellow and blue and with the combination of these three colors you can make the secondary colors. So the primary colors are these three and the secondary colors definitely red and yellow mix up become orange and uh, red and blue become violet and this becomes green. So we will have secondary colors here afterwards. So how many people uh, know the exact uh, theory behind the complementary colors? Uh, has anybody tried uh, a particular thing? Maybe the people in art school have done that, but we will do it again here. Uh, the particularly the complementary color, the, the opposite color of this color is the image what you get after you close your eyes. That is in subconscious uh, state. So what happens is if you have this color, you will have somewhere nearer to this color, which is exactly complementary to that. So this is, uh, this is uh, I just, uh, we had to do this exercise as a part of our uh, uh, foundation course in our art school. Where we all were asked to paint a favorite color, take it out from the bottle, paint it on the paper and make a square of that. We did not re realize why this uh, old professor is telling us something like this, which, which, was, which was like uh, we were feeling kuch design karne dete, kuch or draw karne dete, ye kya ek square nikalo paint karo. And there were no uh, projectors at that time where he could show that. So he had done this. And then he had also asked us a very interesting thing to uh, draw another square where you fill in the color what you saw there. And then we have to uh, put that remembering kya color dekha tha humne sky blue, kitna sky blue tha, kitna light blue tha, wo hum log wahan pe fill up kar de de. Okay, so the point was <coughs> to uh, come to the color wheel now. So the color wheel is based on the fact that as I told already, we have the yellow, <coughs> the red and uh, uh, this, this color wheel anyway like I told you, this is taken from the, the video uh, areas. So this is as a RGB as a main thing, but we will have uh, this particular color wheel as our standard color wheel for the color mixing at least. So whatever color schemes, what you do, what you see in life are based on this color, color wheel. So, so this color wheel has uh, different color schemes based on uh, the requirements. So the main, main color scheme is typically used uh, which is monochromatic where you will have uh, all the shades of the same hue. Now we will start talking in terms of the uh, words what we have learnt already. So what is hue? Hue is another name of color, right. So shades of the same color is called a monochromatic color scheme which is like same color. So this point is constant. You can just go in the direction where it will meet the center point, but you cannot go here and there. So that is called monochromatic. You will have a color scheme called complementary where you can go in contrast. So you can have, if you select one color on this side of the circle, you select the other color which is completely opposite, 180 degrees opposite of this color, right. And then you have some interesting shades here. Then you also have something called analogous wherein you can go to the neighborhoods. So, aju baju mein ja sakte hai thoda. So, ek color choose karo, ek step left, ek step right is called analogous color scheme. This is also a very popular color scheme, but it is slightly different than monochromatic. Like you see now here, you have at least uh, 12 colors here which are fairly different than each other, right. Then there is something called split complementary also, which is like you, uh, complementary was if you choose this color you have to go exactly opposite. In split complementary, you split the opposite color into two colors and then go nearby that. So for the blue, you can, you need not take orange, you can take red and you can take yellow. So this is called split complementary color scheme, which is also used quite often. But the, uh, the most important fact what I wanted to explain using this thing uh, comes now, uh, which is about the the U uh, saturation, brightness, everything of the given color scheme. So how, how can you construct a color scheme based on this? So for example, you have a, you have a color wheel, right? So you have uh, red, yellow and blue and then uh, you have another 
triangle of the secondary colors which is orange, violet and green right and the here is probably white and on the other side is black somewhere here. So it means that from orange if you keep on adding black at a point it will become complete jet black right and here if you keep on reducing orange it will become white. Okay. Uh, the point here is uh, when you want to create a color scheme apart from the four color schemes whatever I have been uh, saying just now. Uh, the important fact to remember is the two colors what you select, what is the relation between these two colors. So for example, uh, now let us take a case about we want to design suppose uh, uh, maybe a, a welcome slide for a certain course. Now we need to have certain background. Now we can select that we will take some color right now. Suppose we take uh, what color do you want to choose? Huh? Red. Okay. So we, we have, so red is like from uh, black to white and all shades of red in between. Suppose we select some color now. Which which one? Which shade? Lighter or darker? Lighter. Okay, pink. Okay, so suppose we are here somewhere, right? The point is that now you want to put up a text on that. Now, what is the color you will choose for this? For the time being, let's not worry about black and white, we'll just leave those, they are not colors. So if you don't have black and white, what is the color you will choose? We have somewhere here which is like pink shade what you can say. So now for writing a text on that, what is the, the other side, what is the text, text color? Green, okay, green, green will become, uh, green can be from this point to this point and it will be called a complementary color scheme anyway. If we do not want to go into complementary color scheme suppose, any other color except for green, yellow, <laughs> okay. Blue, white, violet, okay. so you take violet, so which is nearby that. Now again from white, in sense the lighter violet to the black violet, black violet the, the rule is that you have to have at least 60 percent difference between the contrast levels of two colors. So if like suppose I say 0 percent white here and uh, 100 percent black here. So if I say that this is somewhere around, uh, so red is having uh, around 40 percent and 40 percent of white. So this is around the pinkish shade. So especially in violet you cannot use anything which has 40 percent white and you cannot use, uh, you have to only use anything which is having above 100 percent of violet till 100 percent of black. So anything in that range is okay because that is the only thing which will give you contrast. Typically the mistake happens when you select a 70 percent violet or something like which is having a very low contrast with the background uh, which is very nearby or sometimes you select a very very dark background or also a darker shade or maybe slightly lighter shade. So the thumb rule is that you have to have at least uh, 60 percent of tonal difference between the two colors what you select and that will only make the thing quite visible otherwise it will be very dull you cannot have a contrast on that. So black and white is the ideal example of that because you have 100 percent contrast between the two but uh, the moment you start decreasing so if I have a gray paper here so you look at this particular document writer and uh, okay now here there is no no difference here but Anyway, if I, if I have the blue blue pen and the black pen, then there is hardly any contrast between the two. So you cannot see them separately like this one. So you have this black and this blue. So the contrast is very less. But what they have put in here is the silver writing or the white writing. So you can see it very clearly. If this was written in the same blue color, you could not have seen it actually. So these are the, uh, this is a very important rule. So this you need to remember quite well and quite often because uh, typically this will have uh, a lot of bearing on what you do. I have another uh, thing to showcase about uh, the use of fonts which is, which is the next uh, particular topic about discussion. Uh, 